Welcome back to Heja Framtiden, the Swedish podcast on the future. My name is Kirsan von Essen. I'm recording here today from Nordic Sustainability Expo in Stockholm. I'm sitting here with uh, Rul. Welcome to the show. Thanks. You have to pronounce uh, your full name for me. My name is Rul Schattorier, which is a very Dutch name. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and you represent a company called Moyu um, here at the Expo. Um, what can you tell us about Moyu? What was the purpose to begin with? So the, um, the paper industry is number three polluter worldwide. So it emits more CO2 than the airline industry times three. Uh, and one of the bigger deforestators. Um, so we try to change that. And what we do is we... Our goal is to create a paper industry that creates nature instead of destroys nature. And we do that through a product that is made from stone paper. And all our products, so notebooks, shopping lists, whatsoever, they are made from stone paper that you can erase and rewrite. So every product you cannot use once, but over 500 times. And then because the paper industry is cutting down trees, we decided to plant the tree for every product that we sell. So we're creating nature with these notebooks. Wow. So how is it possible to create uh, notebooks from stone? The main resource that we use is, uh, is limestone. And that's a waste product from the, the marble mining industry. Uh, and that's get crushed into a white powder. So the good thing about that is that it does not have to be bleached. And this powder is binded with HDPE, which is a plastic. And once it's in the form of 80% stone, 20% plastic, you can sort of Uh, melt sheets from it or press sheets from it and that makes stone paper and then once it's in the form of stone paper it has a cradle to cradle certificate which means it can be reused and uh, new paper can be made out of it which is better than recyclable so in the regular paper industry what you see is that you always have to need add new pulp because there's fibers in there you have to add a lot of water and chemicals and energy once again to recycle it so it's sort of a the myth of that paper is recyclable is not true because I think to make writing paper the, you can only use fresh pulp and uh, recycled paper is sort of half old paper and half new paper and as you mentioned there's always also a lot of bleach in there yeah yeah so exactly and I think I mean it makes a lot of sense if you think about paper it feels like a cut down a tree a lot of water a lot of chemicals but it depends a lot on what paper mills you use so there's like in between Uh, for making one sheet of A4 paper it costs between 2 to 20 liters of water so we always take the average which is about 10 liters but just the idea of 10 liters is taking a shower is 80 liters you know so if you consume a few sheets of paper that the amount of water that goes in there so, so it, not even just the trees or the chemicals or whatsoever but even if you look at water like there's a huge impact in how the paper industry is, is as it is you know And uh, Moyo is uh, based in the Netherlands still. Uh, what does your plan for expansion look like? Are you partnering up with the retailers? My vision and aim has always been is that the paper industry is not a, it's not a Dutch problem, it's a global problem. So we always said as, as of day one, we're going to make this a global solution. So we want to create awareness about the single-use paper uh, and the alternative of stone paper. Um, so we grew quite fast in the Netherlands, and then we expanded into Germany and France. We're quite okay known in Germany and France is still a bit harder I think um, but we work with local agents so in Germany we have a guy and in France we have a guy and currently we're in Scandinavia so I think now we're looking into opportunities to work with either companies that want to use it as a goodie or stores that want to have like an innovative notebook in their assortment or just consumers that want to change their writing behavior into ours so but we don't know Scandinavia so it's really cool to be here and learn from let's say everyone here and You mentioned it briefly, but one opportunity is to sell directly to business, a business-to-business business, uh, product that they can rebrand themselves and uh, uh, give out the notebook to their employees, for example. Yeah, so that's, I think, um, a lot of companies like sustainable goodies, so that's the main thing that we actually do. So the, the company gets the flexibility to brand the whole notebook in their own style and do their communication about their sustainable marketing strategy or whatsoever. And use those notebooks internally to save paper and money, but also externally to inspire their clients or give a nice storytelling item about who that company is. So uh, it's internally and externally companies use it. Do you have any connections to the paper industry? Do they uh, see you as a threat or do they just uh, think, yeah, cute, keep going? 
Um, I'm not so much involved in the paper industry, but I partner up with another stone paper notebook producer, uh, Paper on the Rocks, and they make non-erasable notebooks, and she's very much involved in the paper industry. Together we are now sort of forming a collective in the Netherlands because the production and recyclability of stone paper is very easy, but it's not there yet locally. So we try to form a collective and get this first production in the Netherlands so that we can also recycle it there. Sort of how I see what we do is that we first have to create sort of volume of traction of this product in a market. And for now we say to companies or consumers, if you're done using it, just give us the paper back. And once there's a volume, we will see that there's also interest in maybe the paper industry or the plastic industry or whatsoever to also start a production of this. So we don't want to sort of, I don't want to be the owner of a, a place that produces stone paper. I just want to be the, the guy that sort of makes sure that the production will be in the Netherlands, you know. So I do work together with other stone paper producers now in the Netherlands and we hope to also partner up with other regular paper industry. So uh, is it cost efficient to work with stone paper or is it uh, more complex? The problem now with stone paper is there's only one production facility <laughs> and, and uh, the volume of the regular papers industry is insanely big. So in theory, stone paper is, is cheaper because the input is waste product. It costs 30% of the energy, it costs no water yeah, and no bleach. So the inputs are way, way more simpler. So if we can get this to a volume, I think the, the paper will be way cheaper than regular paper. And what you see is the, the pulp paper prices are rising very fast because the input which is also trees, or part of trees, is also increasing. So you see the, the regular pulp paper is the prices are increasing, and I think if we create more volume, our prices will drop, and then at one point be as cost-effective. Would you say that the Netherlands has uh, an interesting scene for startups and uh, climate tech and sustainability? Yeah, that's why we're based in Amsterdam. I think is uh, same as the, you also have an impact up, but also in Amsterdam there's an impact up. I think uh, I often call it the green bubble, but there's a lot of things and cool things happening in Amsterdam and around Amsterdam. A lot of inspiration for other companies, and yeah, so I think it's a great climate. So, what are you hoping to uh, take away from this uh, North Sustainability Expo? Yeah, so it's the first time uh, on in Scandinavia or in Sweden. So we really hope to, I don't know, find interesting partners, stores, people, inspiration, just to get a feeling if our product or solution would be something for this market that's the main goal and we also one of the things it's more like a fun thing but i created this awareness campaign which is called mojo kuku and what we then do is we created our product with a with a very funky cover and we hide it in bookstores so we are we've been doing that yesterday in, uh, in stockholm uh, and then people sort of find the, the fir their first sustainable notebook in a store that mainly sells paper notebooks and that's one of the things that we then do, that we just go in the city all day and just find bookstores, see what they sell, what, what are the prices, but also hide some of our products, just, I don't know. It's like reverse uh, stealing, you know? <laughs> oh, guerrilla marketing. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. So that's fun to do. So, um, yeah, get a sense of the market, I think, and, 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 and interesting people and, and companies. Cool. So, uh, Moyu is M-O-Y-U, and uh, the website is? Moyu.rocks from Stones. Nice rocks. Thank you so much, Rul from uh, Moyu. We're joining here from today. Thanks for having me. The Dutch pronunciation is difficult uh, for Swedes. Um, here from today is uh, recording from Nordic Sustainability Expo in Stockholm, Stockholm's Messe. My name is Christian von Essen. Thank you so much for listening.